All right, number 18 here, we're going to, I guess we'll start just by finding the first and second derivatives. Why don't I copy this since we don't have a lot of room here? And we'll do our work down here. All right, so let's uh, calculate the first and second derivatives of this function. One second. All right. So this is a product rule. So the derivative is going to be found by first doing the derivative of the first factor, which is 6x minus 10, times the second factor left alone. And then we'll put a plus sign and leave the first factor alone and multiply by the derivative of the second factor. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Now what we should do is, uh, I think we have a, we should factor out the common factor of e to the x. So we have uh, 6x minus 10 plus 3x squared minus 10x plus 6 left over in brackets here. And what happens here, 3x squared stays uh, 6x and minus 10x is minus 4x, and minus 10 plus 6 is minus 4. So there's our first derivative. That's what we should put in the uh, in the first entry over here. The first answer slot, and now let's calculate the second derivative. So, of course, to find the second derivative, we just take the derivative of the first derivative. So let's take the derivative of this formula right here. And it's pretty much going to be the same as what we did here. It's going to be a uh, product rule again. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x times this one left alone. And now we'll leave e to the x alone. And we'll multiply by the derivative of this which is uh, 6x minus 4. And then the same thing, we're going to factor out e to the x. And then we'll simplify. So let's see here, 3x squared is all by itself, so we'll leave that alone. Minus 4x plus 6x is plus 2x. And minus 4 minus 4 is minus 8. So there's our... Um, second derivative. That's what we should be putting in this answer area. <coughs> so we've answered the first part of that question. So what do we have to do now? Well, we have to decide where this function is increasing and where it's decreasing. That's for this first part. And then later we'll have to find where it's concave up and concave down. Remember that the first derivative, that measures where it's increasing and decreasing, right? Wherever the first derivative is positive, the function is increasing. Where the first derivative is negative, it's decreasing. And similarly, where the second derivative is positive, that's where it's concave up. And where the second derivative is negative, that's where it's concave down. So let's think about how we finish this problem now. So our first derivative, that's this formula right here, right? Um, why don't I go like this? I'm just going to divide the things in half, okay? Uh, f prime of x is this expression right here, e to the x, 3x squared minus 4x minus 4. The second derivative is this expression right down here, e to the x times 3x squared plus 2x minus 8. And we basically need to solve the critical points of these two fu functions. And uh, since these functions are defined everywhere, there are no numbers which make them undefined. The only kind of critical points we're going to be thinking about is where it's equal to zero, right? So what we have to do on each of these, it's going to be very analogous what we do for each one. Why don't we just do the first derivative first? So we have to solve where this derivative is equal to zero. So in other words, we have to solve where this product is equal to zero. 
Well, we know that if a product is equal to zero, that means either the first factor is zero or the second factor is zero. And you know what? This here, this is impossible. The e to the x is always a positive number. It can never be zero or negative. So e to the x equals zero is impossible. Why don't I just say no solutions? So I don't even have to think about that particular equation. But what about this one? Well, um, I'm just wondering to myself, can this be factored? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do b squared minus 4ac. And that'll tell me if it's factorable. Ah, when I did b squared minus 4ac, in other words, negative 4 squared minus 4 times 3 times negative 4, I got 64. So that, and 64 is a perfect square, positive. Uh, so it's a perfect square. And we can factor it. The reason I know I can factor it is because 64 is a perfect square. So this has to be 3x and x. And what would these other ones be? I guess 2 and 2, right? We want to make a negative 6x and then a positive 2x to get negative 4x. And there we go. And if this times this is 0, that means either this first factor is 0 or the second factor is 0. If the first factor here is 0, that means x is negative 2 thirds. And if this factor is 0, that means x is 2. So we've just found the critical numbers for the first derivative. Let's make a little sign chart here to uh, decide where the derivative is positive and negative. So let's say negative 2 thirds is here. And let's say 2 is here. Let's think about the signs of the derivative here. Well, you know, e to the x is always positive, right? So really, I only have to think about the sign of this factor here. And if you think about it, it's going to be negative here. And then it's going to be positive here. And then negative here. Oh, I'm <laughs> that's completely backwards. Sorry. Um, it's the other way. Excuse me. And how do you know? Well, for example, take any number between negative 2 thirds and 2, such as 0. If I put 0 in here, I get negative 4, and that's negative, right? If I take any number in here, like, I don't know, 10, and put it in there and work it out, I really will get a positive number. And if I take any number down here, such as negative 1 or negative 5, and I put it in here, I will get a positive value. So that's how I decide on these signs. And now that I know the signs, I know exactly the answer to the question of where this uh, function is increasing, right? So that wherever, remember, wherever f prime is positive, that's where f is increasing. And wherever f prime is negative, that's where f is decreasing. So it's decreasing from minus 2 thirds to 2. Let's write that up here. So it's decreasing on minus 2 thirds to 2. And it's increasing on the other two intervals, in, in, namely minus infinity to minus 2 thirds, union 2 to infinity. And now we're going to do basically exactly the same procedure to answer con the concave up and concave down question. And we're going to do that right over here. So let's do the same, start off the same way. We're going to solve the second derivative equal to 0. So we have e to the x times 3x squared plus 2x minus 8 equal to 0. And that means either the first factor is 0 or the second factor is 0. But like we saw before, e to the x is never 0, and it's never negative either. So this has no solutions. e to the x can never be 0. And now we have another quadratic equal to 0. So I, I'm just going to do b squared minus 4ac again in my calculator, just to see if this is factorable or not. Uh, 2 squared minus 4 times a, which is 3, times c, which is negative 8. Ah, I get 100. So. 100 is a nice perfect square, so that means this one can actually be factored as well. 
If I didn't get a perfect square, I, I could just use quadratic formula, right? Um, so let's uh, let's factor it. I prefer to use factoring than quadratic formula, just because it's faster. But some students hate factoring, so even though it's longer, they still prefer quadratic formula. So what would be the numbers here? Let's see here. Uh, maybe a four to two. Yeah, that would work. Why don't we put a two here and a four there? Then we get a six and a four. Let's make it a positive six and a minus four. Then we get 6x minus 4x, that's 2x, and negative 4 times positive 2 is negative 8. Now, if this product is equal to 0, that means either the first factor is 0, which would force x to be 4 thirds, or the second factor is 0, which would make x be negative 2. So these are our, I don't really want to call them critical points, but they are the uh, important points that we need to think about when we solve the second derivative equal to 0. They're very analogous to these numbers over here, except uh, really what they are is they're uh, possible inflection points, right? The x values of them, anyway. So let's make a very similar little sign chart here, but this time for the second derivative. Let's mark our two points, minus 2 and 4 thirds. And again, when we look, when we put test numbers into the derivative, second derivative here, we don't care about this e to the x because e to the x, e to anything is always positive. So really we're just focusing on the sign of this quadratic here. And similarly it's going to be positive minus positive. I kind of know that because this is a parabola and these are the zeros so it's, it's kind of like a, a parabola that goes like this. So between here and here it's negative and on these parts it's positive. But you can just uh, to tell that, you can just take in test numbers, right? Like take put it the number 0 in, for example. When I put 0 in here, I get negative 8. So I know this is negative. Similarly, take some test numbers over here, such as negative 3. And take a test number over here, such as 2 or 5 or whatever you like. And plug it in. And the, the exact answer doesn't matter. Really what matters is the sign. Anyways, we have, our, we have our conclusions now. So we know that where the second derivative is negative, that's where it's concave down. That's where the original function f is concave down. And where the second derivative is positive, that's where the original function f is concave up. So let's write that down. Minus 2 to 4 thirds. Minus 2 to 4 thirds is where it's concave uh, down, right? Yeah. Minus 2 to 4 thirds. concave down on minus 2 to 4 thirds and concave up on the other intervals. Namely, minus infinity to minus 2 union 4 thirds to infinity. Okay, so that completes that question.